Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and today I'm going to be showing you how I used some of the elements from the latest paper pumpkin kit to create clear cards as an alternative. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. As soon as I saw other YouTubers unboxing the April 2021 paper pumpkin, which is called So Cool, I knew that the first thing I had to do when I got mine was to make some clear cards. If you've been around my channel very long, you know that I love to use clear cardstock for my card bases from time to time. And although I haven't been sharing much of them lately, I also like to see what alternatives I can use with the latest paper pumpkin. I have to say when I saw this kit, it was very inspiring, so I hope to be back over the next few days to share some more with you. My cards today will pretty much follow the layout that Paper Pumpkin suggested in the kit, but I'll be putting my elements onto that clear card base. Because these are shaped cards and they have a front and an inside once you fold them, this is gonna be perfect to make a clear card. I will just slice these in half one portion will go on the front and then the white portion goes on the inside for my personal message and it will be hidden by the front. The only thing right now that I had to grab from my stash was two pieces of clear cardstock. Now I have a whole video talking about what I buy, how I cut it, some more specifics that if you're interested in this, I will link it in that description box below. Now please keep in mind the sheets that I like to buy, it's the clear cardstock with a tissue behind it. I just think this might help with scratching, but ever since the pandemic, this has not been available in the eight and a half by 11, 10 mil thickness with those tissues. So I do have a couple different alternatives in the description box below if you wanna give those a try. Now, if you don't wanna buy a whole package of clear cardstock, you could go to your local copy or print shop and ask them if you can just buy some of the clear covers they use for binding books. If I add anything later on in the video from my stash or from the kit, I will make sure to let you know. But if I leave you with any questions, as always, leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. Before I get started with today's process, I did want to stop by with a little channel member shout out. A great big welcome to my new paper trimmer level members, Sherry Pemberton, John Yell Smith, Scrapper Boo and Created to Bless, aka June. I also want to say a big thank you to all of my channel members. Your support, your inspiration is greatly appreciated. If you're interested in finding out more information of the perks of channel membership, I do have a link at the top of the description box below. If you join in April 2021 as any level, you will receive a special gift in the mail from me. To get started today, I will be cutting two pieces of clear cardstock in half. One of them gets cut to four and a quarter by 11, and the other is eight and a half by five and a half. Now this stock does cut well with either a rotary blade like I have on my trimmer or just some of those little teeny tiny blades like you might have on a different Fiskars trimmer or on a Stampin' Up! trimmer. Again, in that video, that Q&A, I do show you how it cuts with different types of trimmers. Now one thing I also get asked a lot is whether or not these cards stand up on their own and you'll see here once I fold that and crease it, they do stand up very nicely. Once I had my card bases cut and folded, I brought back in the cards from the paper pumpkin kit and I cut those in half. 
for the watermelon and the rainbow. I just used my little scissors and trimmed up where needed. And for the popsicles, I was gonna do it with my scissors, but I kind of had a hard time seeing where the fold line was. So I brought in my little Fiskars Photo Bypass Trimmer, folded the card in half, and then placed that fold right up against the cut edge and just sliced them. The next step was to get these placed onto those clear card bases. For the popsicles, I will be using the portrait or the tall cards. And for the watermelon and rainbow, I will be using the landscape or the horizontal cards. Now, what I did was just add adhesive to the back of the popsicle and center that on the front. Now you do see there on the back, the adhesive shows through. And for me, it doesn't bother me. If it does bother you, you could cut another piece in the same shape to cover that up. For the inside, I place adhesive just like the first piece. But to line this up and get it right, I place it sticky side up right behind the popsicle on the front. And then when I have it in place, I hold it down pretty firmly and then I close the front cover of the card and press down that adhesive. That way when the card is closed you can't see that popsicle on the inside so your personal message will be hidden from the front. I then repeated this same process for the final three cards just doing my best each time to center those on the card fronts and get the insides lined up. Now it was time to stamp those sentiments, so I brought in all the items I would need. For my cards today, I chose You Are So Cool and Hey There. This is slightly different than what the photo shows from Paper Pumpkin, but I will most likely be sending these to subscribers, so I didn't want to do the happy birthday or the way to go. I just thought these would be easier to send out for all occasions. Now because these stamps had not been used yet, I did stamp each of them on a scratch piece of paper and they looked great so I went ahead and stamped hey there on the circles and you are so cool on those little fishtail tags. Now you'll notice in the background I do have that black Sizzix mat underneath my pieces and that just helps because the clear stamps don't have cushion on them, it provides that cushion and helps get a nice crisp image on those. I pulled out the yellow twine from the kit and I cut four lengths of it just completely eyeballing it. I didn't know how much I would need, but I luckily got pretty close. For the longer fishtails, I put a strip of adhesive on the back and then I made little circles with my twine. You'll see I did a smaller one in the center and then I went right around it and did a slightly larger circle. Now any leftover tail can be trimmed off with scissors or I just put it right against that adhesive on the back. For the little hey there circles, instead of doing multiple circles, I did two figure eights. After I placed that adhesive on the back, I started my twine toward the outer edge. I wrapped it so it was a little figure eight and then a larger figure eight around that. I have to say this was probably the most difficult part of the cards. I did cut out quite a bit of me just trying to figure out what to do. But in the end, this is what I felt worked best. Stampin' Up! provided these silver glittery shapes to place the sentiments onto, and they provided dimensionals as well. But because I want my foam tape to cover up as much of that twine on the back as possible to keep it in place, I did bring in my big blue rolls of foam tape in, I believe it was a 3 8 inch width and the 3 quarter inch width. That way you'll see here, I can place a piece on the center of that fishtail banner and it holds down all of that twine so it won't get away from me. Now you could definitely do this with the dimensionals provided. I just like to keep those for smaller items. For the circles, I use the bigger foam tape, cut off a piece that I thought would fit well and place these on the back of the circles. This does have pretty easy to pull release paper, but I do suggest burnishing it or rubbing your fingers across the back just to help the foam stick to the paper so when you pull off the release part that it comes off easily. Once I have pulled all of the release, these get centered either on the glittery silver circle 
or on that little glittery silver rectangle. I brought back in my decorated card bases and I added the embellished sentiments to each of those. I did try to have them touch the die cut piece or the card from the kit, but I had them hang over in some of the open space on the clear card front. While I finished putting on the embellishments, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or the question of the video. These are just fun little queries that allow us to get to know each other a little bit better. Today's question is, what was the last occasion that you made a card for? And did you hand it to the person or mail it? Let me know in the comment section below and make sure that if you are going to answer the question of the day that you add the hashtag, hashtag QOTV so I know that you would like me to see it. The last card that I made for a specific occasion was for my daughter's 15th birthday. I do have a video of it and I've popped it up on screen here. And of course I hand delivered it to her because she is only 15 and she's still living in my house. To finish these cards off, you know that I'm going to have to add just a little bit of bling. I brought in some silvery glittery sequins from my stash and the glue dots from the kit. I will be placing three sequins on each of the cards and I'm going to put down the glue dots first so I know where I want to place them. Two of the glue dots go on the front and then I put the third one on the inside. That way there's just a little bit more added dimension and then when you open it to the inside to see the message, there's also a little bling inside there. I finished the remaining cards in the same way and before I could stop to give you a look at all of them, one of my kitties, Aspen, decided that she would stop by. Now I know that many of you have met Lyndon before in my videos and she likes to walk through frequently, but this was the very first time that Aspen did it. So when she laid down right on my cards, I did have to stop the video and give her some love before I gently moved her out of the way and I could finish. Now if you're a channel member, you already got a look at what Lyndon looks like from the front laying on my cards. And now here's a look at each of those cards finished. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made today's clear cards. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.